Welcome to the Why Not Podcast with me, Chrissy Hawkins. In a world where everybody asks you why, I'm here to ask why not. So sit back and relax or walk and listen and join me on this journey as we try to answer this never-ending question. What makes people say why not? Hi guys, welcome back to Why Not. So today I have an interview for you with Shane McCarthy from the Grassroots Gazette. But instead of me telling you what he's doing, because it's not just a grassroots gazette, I'm going to let Shane explain to you. So, hey, Shane, how are you? Welcome uh, to Wynott. Thank you for having me, Chrissy. Excited to be here. Yeah. Um, what do I do? <laughs> I do lots. Yes. So I am the new, uh, about to be announced as the new CEO of the Grassroots Gazette. I set it up at Mike O'Flynn uh, late last year. Um, we now run the fastest growing online equine media brand in Ireland or the UK. Uh, with over 30,000 subscribers. We brought that last week. Um, I am also the CEO and one of the co-founders of Equitas, which is the world's first positivity movement and media brand for equestrian women, with Mike again and the wonderful Sarah Campbell and Sarah Ellibert. Um, we set that up roughly in March. Uh, we launched the first edition on July 1st. It was read in 42 countries after four days, which was an amazing feat. I would have been happy with three or four, to be honest. Um, I run a marketing company on the site, um, which satisfies my first two businesses. Because <laughs> um, it pays my wages. Um, and we are in the middle. We also have horse pay, of course. Um, and then we are in the middle of just designing a couple of more brands as well. Um, just in case we didn't have enough on. Oh, and uh, as of today, this morning, I will now be the sports correspondent uh, on Saturdays for uh, Spin South West, talking all things sports on Saturday mornings. All right, so obviously we can tell from there that you don't sleep, but um, <laughs> so tell me where the idea for the grassroots came, came about, because that's what I think was the main thing we're going to talk about, and then into Equitas as well. Um, the Grasses Gazette, been honest, started came about by chance. I won't say there was a big overarching plan. We were doing a lot of work on horseback. Um, we were able to get a huge amount of traffic to that website uh, when Mike and his previous partner were involved in it. Um, but we weren't able to get transactions through the site. Horseback was a, a payments platform. Um, buying and selling horses online with money held in an escrow account. So after that, we were trying to figure out, Mike was sort of thinking, what would he do? Um, we weren't getting enough traction so the idea I was looking around at what was happening in the equine industry and I said it, a lot of the media is traditional um, you know the Irish Shield do a fantastic job but most of what they do is offline 77,000 readers a week you got well done but they only cover the top 10% really of the industry um, then me and Mike started chatting around media and then we done horse pay media for a while and then that sort of led on to a big discussion around why is nobody covering the other 90% of the equine industry with media coverage? And then that led on to, well, nobody's covering the grassroots side of it, literally from the bottom up, mm. grassroots community, nobody shines a light on them for the best part across any media in this country. Yeah. Um, and that's fundamentally where it came from, discussions and looking and observations and going, yeah, I think that there's, we both felt that there was a gap within the market for the other 90%, but primarily starting with grassroots. Um, so that came about maybe last July, June, I think. Um, so June 14, 15 months ago. And by, I'd say September, we had a brand in place. Really? Maybe August, September, we designed the brand that you can see in my hoodie. And then from there, we decided what our vision was. We were going to launch uh, two magazines a month. And we were going to cover the grasses community in a way nobody had ever known before. And that was where I came from. That's interesting, yeah, because you're, you're right, even saying with the Irish Field, but like, you know, getting any form of equestrian stuff covered in Ireland is like impossible. Like, you know, you might get half the Dublin Horse Show when it's on or like not even, even during the Olympics, RT's coverage was shocking bad. Like, and you're like, you've got these great athletes and the Irish like equestrian industry is so big and they're not showing any of it. Yeah, literally. And you're going, there has to be a better way. Um, and through the grasses, is that true equity Most of the stuff we try and get involved with them or do the next generation, hopefully we, we will get to chat about that a small bit. Um, it's looking who isn't getting support, mm. who isn't getting coverage. Why aren't they getting coverage? What are the problems? 
the obstacles here to doing this. Um, and then it's having a particular set of skills. You know, Mike's, I don't have a huge amount of, uh, of echoing experience. Mike does. Um, but I have a huge amount of marketing and media experience. So we were mm -hmm. perfect partners together to launch this and get it off the ground. Um, but to go back to what you said, 100%, I mean, the for the size of the equine industry that we have, for the amount of turnover it does yearly, I think close to 2 billion, it adds uh, on a yearly basis as far as GDP. And you're coming in going, that's a huge amount of money. Mm -hmm. There's a huge, like, and the reputation, like you touched on, that we have and we're known for across the world, for racing, for show jumping, eventing, dressage. Um, you look at it all and you're going, breeding, producing, of course. And you're going, we need to be better at this. And that's what we're trying to do with the grasses because that is fundamentally create an independent equine media brand that will cover all the grasses, that will give writers, people from across the grasses community a platform to write about what matters most to them and shine a light and give coverage to the areas that aren't getting the, the appropriate coverage that they deserve. Yeah, and like there are such big communities, like even down at like the grassroots level, like it's... Um, I don't think people realise it's not just, I suppose, you get the original kind of, I don't know, a stereotype of just posh people riding horses, but it's, <laughs> especially in Ireland, it's all different types of people, like, you know. <laughs> oh, it is. You have people who do showing, people who do eventing, you have people who are happy hackers, you have people who just love being in and around horses. You, we have, it's a huge part of our history, um, and nobody was shining a light on them, and I'm very proud to say what we've done across the last nine months with the Grasses Gazette um, through writers like you being on board, shining a light on things that aren't like you writing about um, writer fitness. Mm. Not enough is done on that. No. It just isn't. And, you know, we have a huge audience. So having somebody awesome like you writing about stuff you know, I can't talk about writer fitness. I'm overweight and I can't ride horses. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not the person. Mike is underweight and he can ride horses. Still not the person. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you are the person. So when you look at it, you're going, that's it. I think we're in a, a privileged position to be able to cover and give coverage to the people who don't get it. And I think I talk about it a lot of the time. You'll be sick of me hearing me saying it, Chrissy. Where great power comes great responsibility. Um, we understand the responsibility we have. We understand what we're here to do and what we're here to try and solve. Um, and that's what keeps me awake at night. That's what um, our passion is and that's what our purpose is. And we're, again, in a really lucky position to have a passion and have a purpose and have the skill set to be able to go and execute that. Yeah. Um, I think it's interesting you saying like you didn't know like or you weren't really involved with horses at all before you got involved with this Um, how did you find coming into this world because I don't know it's a little bit crazy <laughs> uh, it suits me down to the ground yeah. um, it is nuts um, for the best part um, but my background is in marketing and media and technology um, but my background is in the startup scene fundamentally that is nuts as well it is borderline mental Um. You work, you know, uh, I love that whole quote. I give up my nine to five job to have more freedom. Now I work seven days a week running my own company. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it is. But what I've loved about it, the, the industry may be a bit mad, but what I've loved about it most is the people. Um, mm -hmm. The people we have met, the journeys they're on, um, how proud they are to own horses and be involved in horses, how proud they are to have Irish bred horses or Irish produced horses. Um, how proud they are to write about the things that matter most to them. I mean, we have, I think, 85 writers in the Grasses Gazette and we have another 35 odd writers for Equitas. So you're talking about across both brands, we have 120 writers from maybe 10 different countries. Um, it's a huge amount. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it is. And you have to try and engage as many of them as possible as you can because there none of these people are professional writers and the same as me and Mike Garrett or Sarah Campbell or Sarah Elliber. Um, they're just really good people but mm -hmm. you need to stand behind them you need to have their back you need to instill that confidence into them um, that they'll feel that you're going to support them no matter what um, that's when people have that creative freedom to write um, but to go back yeah look it's been interesting I mean look yeah, it took me at least six months to learn how to say gilet um, I, I gilet, gilet, um, gilet, um, and every other word other than gilet. Um, 
And you're going, yeah. <laughs> There's still things that I was on a call with somebody yesterday and they said something and I wrote it down. And Mike, what does this mean? And Mike is like, I actually have no idea either. <laughs> and we had to go look it up. Um, but look, our job isn't, I'm, as you know from me, I'm incredibly optimistic and positive. Mm. Uh, you have to be. Um, I'm, I've unwavering belief in what we're doing and how we're trying to do it and the people who are surrounding ourselves with. Um, the community has been a, an amazing community to get involved in. I love the people in it. Um, I love the challenges we're facing. And I think the possibilities and the opportunities that are opening up are, are, are it's just surreal to see. I mean, before I come on with you, I was on the Equitas account and a girl messaged in and she just said, um, my head is fried. I've way too much going on in my head. I am 100% going stealing my partner's laptop next week and I'm going writing a piece for Equitas. Uh, <laughs> that was her her break. That was her freedom. Okay, her head is melted. She's way too much going on in her head. Her freedom was to write an Equitas. That is a beautiful thing to be able to do. Yeah. Um, you know, so the industry has been really good, really welcoming, incredible, incredibly supportive. Um, I think they're very excited about what we're doing. You know, nobody's given grassroots coverage. Nobody's launched a brand for young people. Nobody has launched a positivity movement or media brand for women in the equine industry. And we seem to be trying to do it all at once. Now, look, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking, yeah, speaking of Equicast, so tell me about Equicast and where did that come from as well? Oh, uh, yeah. So, um, you may have listeners from abroad as well or wherever. So, I, I'll try and keep this as... as honest and open as I can without saying too much. Um, last January in Ireland, a girl got murdered. Um, wasn't good. Uh, big national news here. Um, yeah. She was just going out for a run. Um, on the day that the guy got caught for that, it was a couple of days later, or maybe the same day or a day later, uh, I got a call from my sister. Um, and fundamentally, she, like, just to be blunt, she said, I don't like you today. Um, and I said, why? And she said, because you're a guy. And I went, okay, you don't like any guys today. And she said, no. And I went, all right. And she said, what are you going to do about this? What the fuck are you going to do? You run this media brand in this medium, bro. What are you going to do to help women? And I said, I don't know, sis. But uh, leave her with me. Mm. And I'm, I won't say I'm welling up while talking about this, but it does, uh, yeah. So um, I spent the next three and a half weeks, Chrissy, thinking what we could do. Mm. And I mean, walking around in my sitting room at five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning with a stress ball. Uh, I find it funny. I don't really get stressed. I use these things that distract myself when I'm doing them, when it's spinny tools, etc. Um, but I'm walking around and throwing these things around or spinning my tools um, and just trying to think what we could do. And fundamentally, it came down to why is there no media brand for women in the equine industry? Why has nobody created a movement? Why has nobody created this thing where women could support each other? Um, and where women could have each other's back and where we could have a community of women all over the world and where we could start influencing decision makers and where we could start creating real impact for women um, and change the narrative um, and put women in, uh, support women so that they could be in these positions of leadership and so we can actually start having influence. Mm. So about three and a half weeks later, I come back to Mike. I said, Mike, I want to launch a women's event. No, we're four months after launching the Grasses Gazette. Um, most other business partners will tell you to politely fuck off um, <laughs> and say no. But Mike is the same as me. Mike has two sisters. Um, mm -hmm. I have two older sisters. Mike has two older sisters. We grew up surrounded by women a lot of the time. Uh, and Mike said, and Mike, we both said it to each other, we want to be able to look at our mams and our sisters in, our eyes, in their eyes and look and go, we did something. We tried to do something. You know, so I rang back my sister after three and a half weeks and I said, here's what I want to do. And she said, right, go do it. That was it. Yeah. And I, like, Mike. I said, Mike, here's what I'm thinking. Mike said, right. Yeah, I'm on board. Um, then we started looking at who we would want to get involved, etc. We asked six women to sit in an advisory board. And mm -hmm. then on Monday and a Sunday night at half one in the morning, I was talking to one of my closest mates in the world, a girl called Tracy Kyo. She runs Grow Remote, Ireland's fastest growing remote working company. Huge business. She's an amazing girl. Um, but Tracy rang me about half one on a Sunday night. And Tracy said, um, how are you getting on? We're talking to you. And Tracy, Equitas is amazing. 
It's a women's brand and positivity movement for women in the equine industry. Um, we have six women in an advisory board and they're advising me and Mike. It's fantastic. And she went, okay. So you have six women advising two guys on a women's media brand. And I went, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. She went, right, you idiot. I'm going to say this one more time. <laughs> and I went, all right, Kika. And she said, you have six women advising two men. I went, okay, I get it. <laughs> she said, what are you going to do? She said, women want two things. They want pay or they want power. Mm. And I went, okay. And I said, well, we can't pay them because we're not getting paid. And she went, okay, well, what are you going to do? Give them equity, give them power. And I said, I don't know, leave it with me. So I set up at about five o'clock in the morning um, after that chat. Had a good long think about it. And at eight o'clock next morning, I rang Mike. And I said, Mike, listen, had a chat with Chase Scott last night. Here's my thoughts. Um, I said, I think we need to give away some of the company. I said, I think we need two female co-founders. I think they need to probably come from the advisory group. Um, <clears throat> I said, if you're on board with it, what I'd like you to do is write down two names. And I said, I'm going to write down two names. And I said, put them in WhatsApp, put one and two beside them. And I said, right, we're on the call. And I said, press in. He pressed in, I pressed in the exact same time. And then Sarah Campbell, Sarah Oliver, Sarah Campbell, Sarah Oliver. We both picked them. We, and we hadn't talked about it. There was no chat, no anything. Picked two women of all the women we've met, maybe from the advisory group, but from all the women we've met in the equine industry, we both picked the exact same two girls. And Mike ranked one, one and two, and I ranked the other one and two. It was, you could not write this. Um... <laughs> So literally, that was, let's say, eight, half eight in the morning, Chrissy. Uh, 10 o'clock, I rang Sarah Campbell and I rang Sarah Elbert. And I said, I want, we want to give you equity. We want you to join us, sorry, as co-founders of Equitas. Um, and we would like to give you a huge cohort to the company. Um, and we can all be four co-founders together because two guys should not be leading a women's movement without having women in that seniority of position. That's literally one of the things we're trying to solve. And we can't be part of the problem if we're trying to provide a solution. So, Equitas came about. Equitas, the name came from Sarah Campbell. And um, then we started talking about building a positivity because a lot of women were saying that to us that they wanted more support and they wanted people having their backs. And again, like I was saying on the grassroots writers, people who were going to instill confidence in them. Um, and that's what we tried to do. So, Equitas was born. Uh, it was actually Sarah Campbell came up with loads of different names first. Sarah Campbell then came up with Equitas. Uh, Aquitas, sorry, A E Q U I T A S E, uh, which is a Latin word, but the modern word for that word is equitas, which oh, okay. stands for justice, fairness, and equity for all. Oh, definitely. That's cool. I like it. What's the feedback been so far about equitas? Uh, incredible. Um, genuinely incredible. Uh, I think the most surprising thing was probably the volume of submissions we had. We had Olympians submit pieces for edition one, they didn't get oh, really. Um, yeah, genuinely two. I think maybe even three, two Olympians. I'm definitive on two because um, I know their names. I won't say I'm here, but mm -hmm. I know their names. Um, one from New Zealand and one from Germany. Um, mm -hmm. We've had writers from, I think, 20 countries apply to be writers. Um, and like I said, somebody messaged me and I can be a bit funny at times around proving a point to people. Uh, I need to be better at it. But look, however, um, somebody sent me a message about a week before we launched Equitas. Like, let's be clear, like it, Equitas is hard. So is the grass is because accuracy. Mm. It's not easy. Um, you know, when I told people to do Equitas, Mike was instantly agreeable that we needed to do something. Um, he, that's why he's been such a wonderful business partner. But without naming names i went and i met an investor uh here in ireland who's involved in the equine industry and he told me i was a fucking idiot um that he really shouldn't be doing this just focus on the grassroots gazette i yeah. went and said it to some people i would call senior at the grassroots gazette and they told me i was an idiot as well and told me we shouldn't be doing this uh, yeah. i've also got a litany of abuse from people saying you shouldn't be a guy running a women's media brand um but I don't really mind any of it. I mean, fundamentally, our our goal isn't to listen to negativity. It's to be a positive vibe and a positive movement. Mm. Um, so the feedback from Equitas has been incredible. Um, the articles that I've written, I mean, to see Myrna Tool Brennan write about her alopecia in addition to something she never has talked about publicly. Um, I know I have one of the submissions read already. There's maybe eight or ten in for edition four. 
the closing day, by the way, this will already have been out, I'd say. Um, the club there is closed off next Thursday, but the moral being that one, as a byproduct of watching Mern and reading Mern's piece in edition three, another lady is writing a beautiful piece or has written a beautiful piece for edition four about her journey dealing with illness. Uh, I won't go into it. Um, but that type of feedback, when you see women supporting each other and feeling mm. comfortable to write in a way they've never been comfortable to write before um, and having a platform and the word that keeps coming back is that we're inclusive. Um, now, I, if I'm being blunt, I don't think we're inclusive enough at all at all. Um, you know, whether I like it or not, fundamentally, we have two guys and 12 odd women involved in this, um, mostly white, mostly from Europe. Um, that's not okay with me. No, I'm identifying this now because it's a problem we're already addressing. Mm -hmm. um, we have writers coming in from different countries across the next probably six to eight weeks. Um, we will be inclusive. Though. You know what I mean? We will. Yeah. Have, like we're one of the things that it looks like we'll be launching in the next two to three months is an international advisory board because we can't pretend we know what women in Australia and South America and Germany and India and in Canada and wherever in Norway we don't know what they're going through yeah. they don't. we don't know we don't live there we don't live the lives they live and so I'm sure there's consistency or symmetry between some of the stuff but we don't live there we don't do it so we need to be if we're going to be the brand we know we should be we have to be inclusive on a global scale we have to have a localization strategy where we are embodying what they want talked about at that local level in that country we have to have leadership teams across the world who embody the archetype that is to be part of a the Equitas management team or leadership group, which means you're positive, you're supportive, you're, you're trying to instill confidence into people, you're willing to be vulnerable if you need to, you're willing to take flack sometimes because you know that if a person is giving it to you in that way with that negativity that there are people that need to be helped too. You yeah. know, um, I don't take, but align into that the the support has been incredible um what people have done to reach you know what i mean 42 countries in four days somebody i was touching on that earlier somebody sent me a message a week beforehand and told me um not a hope will equity that's be a global brand definitely not so i very mm. politely sent them a picture <laughs> oh, <laughs> and the middle finger emoji <laughs> <laughs> i didn't do that i, I can't say i didn't think about it <laughs> uh, I very politely sent them a picture of uh, the 42 countries. Now, this is about two weeks later because I only got the picture about two weeks later. I got it from Marie or I had to design my partner. And Marie sent it to me and I just said, you were 100% right on this. Definitely not going to be a global brand that was unfortunately read in 42 countries in five inside four days of launch. Just in case you didn't know, 42 countries means we are already covering one-fifth of all of the countries in the world yeah. within four days of launching, but definitely, definitely, definitely not going to be a global brand. <laughs> <laughs> I can be like that. <laughs> That's probably something I need to improve, but my point was don't belittle a women's movement because you don't believe that women need this. That's what I was trying to push back on there. How dare you? Um, women will determine what women need and what not guys. Yeah. You know, oh, but lads like telling gir girls what they need, you know. I'm sure you know that yourself. <laughs> yeah, I hate it. I would never do it. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. No, but you, my, my sisters wouldn't let me. <laughs> I wouldn't be here talking to her. I'd be afraid Slap you around the place. <laughs> yeah, 100, like unequivocally. To this yeah. day, I'm 33, Chrissy. Not a hope what I do. But I tell my sister what to wear, what to do, what this, what that. Um, Who do I think I am? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's the same for Equitas. Um... All we try to do, and very similar to the Grassroots Gazette, is help people become the best versions of themselves that they want to become, not what yeah. we want them to become. Because you can't do that. Your job is to be vulnerable, to be open, to be honest, to be positive, to be confident, to build and instill confidence into people, um, and to put frameworks around them. You know, to put systems where, Chrissy, if you do X, Y, and Z, here's what you'll be able, and this will give you a pathway to here. Mm -hmm. If the Strong in the Saddle brand does this, this, and this, well, then this will happen, and then here. You yeah. know, when you go to Why Not, and you go here, and you put, because that's my background and experience. Um, It's 
people like Sarah Campbell and Sarah Ellibert, the things they do as co-founders is just amazing to see the women that they engage, how they engage them. Um, but I'm look, I'm super excited. The support we've had is incredible. But let's be very, very frank about it. We are a baby. We are not okay. even walking yet. Uh, we don't know how to stand. We are crawling. Uh, <laughs> and I'm very, very excited when we're a three and four-year-old climbing all over the workshops and counters. Uh, <laughs> 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 and we've proper found our feet. But I think Sarah Campbell or Sarah Ellibert was on a podcast recently. Um, and she said, we're not even at base camp of Everest yet. We've just mm. decided we're going to climb Everest. And I love that. Because yeah. I'm, I'm, we can't see the top. We're not even at the mountain. We just know where we're going. Now. We're going to the very top. We're not even at base camp. We may have you know, 42 countries and it sounds great. And it was and it is. But when we have an exclusive and inclusive board, when we have women from 30, 40 countries writing, when we're being invited to cover these topics and events where women actually have a safe place to write, like they feel they do now, and it, we're growing this. You know, I'm excited on, on October 7th. We are, we may as well make this announcement here with you, Chrissy. Um, you're getting some exclusives today. Like, Ooh, you're getting uh, all the news today. It's great. <laughs> I feel like anytime you talk to us, there's no excuses. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many things happening. Um, the, on October 7th uh, is edition four of Equitas. Mm-hmm. Um, that is the last edition we'll do in magazine format of Equitas as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are going on to a platform called Ghost Publishing. Um, and it's fundamentally a creator economy. Uh, where you have this publishing platform and now women all over the world can submit articles whenever they want. Oh, that's amazing. And now you will have literally probably a hundred odd articles a week. That's where I'd be trying to go towards, where you literally have the bonds of 10 or 20 articles. Um, you just said 10, let's just keep it simple. 10 new articles a day going up on our publishing platform from women around the world. Um, and then the next level will be, you know, we run a live stream on the... We were on a live stream two nights ago, uh, and one of the ideas came up was, would we not launch a buddy system for experienced like when women around the world? So just say you, Chrissy, and you're able to mentor a girl who's 16, 17, or 18 who wants to get into coaching or wants to get into fitness. Yeah. And you now have this, and she wants to do it in the equine industry as well, but she could be from America or Australia. And now you're creating these communities, these tribes, um, so after August, October 7th, we do the final edition in a magazine format and then we migrate on to Ghost, similar to what we've done with the Grasses Gazette recently. We got to edition 20, um, the final ever edition of the Grasses Gazette in magazine format and now everything is online because that's where it needs to be, Chrissy. Oh, know? yeah, absolutely. That's where it needs to be. So, yeah, look, it's been exciting so far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. No, I think the Equitas is a brilliant idea as well. Like, you know, and you're right saying that, like, you know, there it is going to get so many women involved. The reason I'm not surprised there was 42 different countries where women are like um, reading because that representation in the media for like especially in the equine industry is is very low. Like you know you look at you go to say for instance a grassroots competition and how many people there are women, and then you look at the international and how many faces are men. It's a disgrace. Yeah, like, like where are they gone? <laughs> yeah, it's a disgrace. Um, genuinely. Uh, like I can talk about it being a guy this isn't men hating um, I think it's very important that Equitas has a male CEO um, not because it's me far from it but because a lot of the decision makers unfortunately are still men um, mm-hmm. and it's much easier for a guy if a woman comes in saying you need to support the women's movement guys automatically get defensive it's so it, it wrecks my head so much um, they get defensive and it's uh, oh, it's you know extreme feminism or it's this or that. No, they just want to be heard and listened to. Yeah. The same as you like to be heard and listened to. This is just a person talking to a person. Um, just because they're the opposite sex means no difference to anything. Um, it's just somebody who wants to be listened to. So me going into a guy and being able to go, listen, you have a daughter, yeah, or two, yeah, and do you want them to grow up in the age that your wife and your mother had to go to? No, I don't. Well, are you going to support the movement and so we can change it for the next generation? Yeah. And they go, yeah, absolutely. Okay, perfect. You know? Yeah, no, do you know what? I absolutely agree with you on that and the whole point. And it's 
it's obviously in a sense it's kind of sad that that has to be that way it's ridiculous yeah, but like it's good that like say for instance there is a voice like you to come out and say that like you know you have to but look with great power comes great responsibility I, I mean it when i say that we were on a call at the start and we were asked the question do you see yourself as a role model um no i actually was listening to a different podcast last night when i was doing work and i'm gonna change my title uh, actually shaquille o'neal the famous basketball player mm. and he said i don't see myself as a role model i see myself as a real model and i love that i yeah. love that he's trying to embody that by being a real model as opposed to a role model a real model acknowledges that we will make mistakes I, me and Mike didn't understand we were making a mistake by having six women on an advisory board and advising two men. It wasn't a conscious thing, but sometimes you make mistakes and it's a subconscious reaction. Hmm. And you go, okay, so in future, what I will be is a real model. But my point on that live stream when we were asked that question was, I think I'm a role model in everything I do. Um, you will not see me inside the WhatsApp groups ber berating women having sexist talks doing anything homophobic anything anywhere um you just won't find it why because yeah. i don't participate in those conversations and if i am surrounded by people who are they very quickly get removed from my life um, mm. and that's the sacrifice you have to make i have lost friends and family over this um but that's a sacrifice i will always make because the right way is always the right way and doing the right thing is always the right thing to do um hence i was giving some of the company um or us spreading the, the equity around the company for myself, Mike, Sarah, and Sarah. Um, it was the right thing to do. Um, when we do evolve the Grassroots Gazette, we will 100% open up equity. Um, so our people, the leadership team, and the, the people, the highest of people can get what they deserve. Um, that's the right thing to do, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, but that's the thing as well. Like, you know, you do say you made the mistake doing that, but you learn from your mistakes and you changed it as soon as someone pointed it out to you you were like oh yeah you're right i need to do something about that that's you have to be willing to don't you yeah you really you grow yeah that's you, you don't learn from all your victories because you don't really take time you just celebrate the victory you learn from your mistakes and i'm the guy i am now versus the guy i was two years ago versus two years and two years and two years um are tall different people yeah you know, i don't think i would have had the mental capacity four years ago to run the grasses because they had equitas and a marketing company as well as having horse better not at all um i'm a lot more disciplined and focused though uh we listen to people a lot more i may like to talk a lot as you know um, mm -hmm. i spend a lot of my time on the phone just talking to people hearing them asking them questions um i would say i've spoken to every single writer that writes for the grasses gazette I would say I've spoken to every single writer that writes for Equitas. Um, everyone. You have to. Yeah. Your job. Your job is to understand those people, know them, listen to them, see what their interests are. No, it's hard. <laughs> you know. Um you you have to embody the lifestyle. Yeah. You wanna be an entrepreneur and if you wanna rule the world, and what I mean by rule the world before I start getting abuse from this because I'll get it anyway. <laughs> I mean, I mean own a vertical, own a niche, be the biggest player in that and have the biggest influence. And I'm saying ruling the world. Influence, impact. You know, the biggest word for me, a lot of the time people ask me why I do what I do, legacy. I want to leave the world in a better place where I found it. Mm -hmm. And my sister challenged me to do something for women. That's what Equitas came from. Let's be clear. Um, did I know something needed to be done? Yeah. Did I realize the level it needed to be done on? Probably not. Um, should I have? I, I wish every guy would and does, but they don't, and we don't. Um, can we change that? Most likely. We can have a big influence on this, but only if we do it with a good heart, with a good mind, with a lot of positivity, with a lot of patience, um, and we execute relentlessly because mm -hmm. you can build this up to be really big, but, you know, I was reading articles last week about a company, and they raised 85 million last June. A lot of money, Chrissy. 85 oh. million and a lot, a lot of money. Um, and they were going back to raise money again this July. They couldn't raise money fast enough, and the company's gone now. Wow. So that's a heavy five million gone. Um, point B, oh. you have to be relentless in our game. Media changes so fast. Oh, yeah, I know. You, they try to compete with you. Um, but I, we don't really spend much time thinking about competitors or any of that. We have huge things we want to solve. Like the next generation is another thing I'm super, super excited about. Um, Can you announce that? 
Yeah, go on, let's go. On. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the thought process here, right? I, I'll paint the picture for you. The, the three biggest markets we can see in the equine industry are young people, mm-hmm. women, and grasses. And even though they're the three biggest markets, they get the least amount of coverage. Yeah. Fundamentally, from a media perspective, they probably make the least amount of money because the people aren't well known. Mm. No, don't get me wrong. That's not to take away that there's people at a grassroots level that compete at a high level. That's not to take away that there's amazing female jumpers, jockeys, etc., performing at the highest level. But they're an anomaly to the rule. Yeah. Because if there was, there would be, if there weren't, there would be hundreds of media brands for women. Mm-hmm. There would be hundreds of media brands for young people. And the same for grasses. So, <clears throat> my, my, me and Mike have been thinking and talking about this literally since we got into the grasses because that how Equitas came about was, you know, like I said, my sister saying that. But a big part that I failed to mention or that I should have mentioned was, you know, we have 85 ad writers for the grasses because that there's at least 60 to 65 of those are female. I would even say 65 to 70. I'd say there's only about 15 guys writing for the grasses because it's something we need to work on, admittedly. Um, because it's it's taught there's no equal balance there. Um, but for argument, for winning, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, but it also it, it showed why equitas is needed because yeah. women weren't getting that opportunity. Uh, like you said, we look at most of the commentators at the top of the field, and they're mostly guys. Yeah. Uh, you look at most of the media coverage in these guys. You look at all the young. You go to events. Me and Mike have gone to them all over the country, and you're a hundred percent right, Christy. You're probably talking eighty percent of the competitors are young girls. And if you go to the highest level and it's um this team or this team and there's four guys on it and there's four guys on this and you're going, this is just, it just can't be that way. It just, yeah. just And it shouldn't and it won't in the future, but we need to accelerate that on now. And the equine industry isn't overly bad. It's not, well, let me rephrase, it's not the worst. There is places where we are better than other industries in the world, but that doesn't mean we should be happy with that or content mm-hmm. with that. Uh, a never-ending improvement means you have to be hungry to be better all the time. Um, so aligning to that, always wanting to be hungry to be better. The two things that have really stood out on the grassroots gazette journey is that women don't get enough coverage um, and that young people don't get enough coverage. Huge thing. Yeah. It's interesting as well because, like, you know, say show like show them all all the competitions like you know if you hear a rider who's riding for ireland for instance in instance and they say they're like you know in their 20s you're like how did he manage to get on the team do you know what i mean like even <laughs> even like i know like teens and stuff like that but you know most sports 20s people are kind of hitting their peak whereas you could be in your 40s and still riding for 50s, 60s even like yeah 100 percent. you look at the age of some of the people competing in four star five star events um and you're going, yeah, absolutely. In their thirties, in their forties, absolutely. It's, it's similar to golf. Yeah. You know, you people in their thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, they could be winning tournaments, but the same principle. So when we looked at that, Chrissy, and we could see that the the areas that lack coverage, three big segments: grassroots, we have that through the grassroots gazette; mm-hmm. women, we have that through Equitas. In a command, well, there's one one thing left which is the next generation yeah. who's covering those. And then literally that was the thought process. You know, we're going to actually launch a, a brand called The Next Generation. Okay. And as I'm talking to you, I have a shitty logo done on my phone. My mm-hmm. missus will murder me. This is only because as when I get off the phone, literally, when I get off the phone, I am going just, uh, yeah, people won't be able to see now because they're on a podcast, but <laughs> a logo after being shown there. Um, because I'm setting up a WhatsApp group straight after this call with five young girls in them um, that will be the leaders of this brand at the start. I've been talking about them all for two weeks. Um, so that's it. We will launch a brand early next year. Um, it will most likely, I can't say it definitively, but it will most likely be called the next generation. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the goal is that we want to build a worldwide media empire. A worldwide media empire that covers grassroots, that covers women, and that covers female equestrian, sorry, and that covers the next generation. Um, and if we build those things to work in parallel with each other and to work in tandem with each other, now we have real influence. Yeah. And if you have real influence and a really big and engaged community, now you can create real impact. 
And that's yeah. the overall vision, you know, where would we be in 12, 18, 24 months? That's where I'd like to be, to have three really big brands that are interconnected, um, the Grassroots Gazette, Equitas, and the Next Generation, and where these brands are giving coverage uh, to people who've never gotten it, but have always deserved it, that are giving a platform to people who have never had that platform, but have the ability, um, mm -hmm. and that we're, we're taking on the world, you know? Yeah. No, that's, it's brilliant. You are covering like all the, you, you'll have it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> if find something, something will crop up and you'll be like, you know what, I need to start another one for that. <laughs> oh, listen, I'll be honest. I, I firmly believe in five to eight years, Chrissy, there will probably be eight legs to this. Yeah. Uh, I'm that, look, I, I'm fairly certain. I have a fair idea what the legs will be. Um, It's just the case of, is that what the community wants? So mm. I want to do a, you know, an all-encompassing sports brand, but a sports brand that's aligning to eventing. So show jumping, dressage, eventing, that vertical. Then I think you, the other side that is a, like a, let's call it a racing brand, but mm. that would cover the whole way top to bottom. So from pony clubs, point to points, racing, and you create the, li the, the linkage across all verticals. Um, mm. I think that's needed. Uh, you have, don't get me wrong, there's brilliant brands like the Racing Post and they do fantastic things, but a lot of those are aligned to betting companies, etc. Yeah. Um, our term for, our tagline for the Grasses Gazette is independent equine media. Keyword being independent. Independent, yeah. You know, our tagline for Equitas is empowering change together. Yeah. The whole encompassing, again, all encompassing being that we're going to empower change all over the world, but we will only do that by doing it together. And you're going, yeah, no, don't ask me about the tagline for the next generation. <laughs> it's all right, you've got a, you've got a while to, to, to discover that. Yeah. <laughs> so we were launching, that page will go live on the Grasses Gazette website in about two weeks, the next generation page. Um, I'd say I have maybe 15 interviews that have been sent out this week. And I probably had another 20, well, we had another 20 people nominated for interviews, young people, rising stars. Mm. Um, and that's the thing, by the way, I'm going to do a shout out while I'm on your podcast, Chrissy. Uh, <laughs> if anybody listening to this knows any young people from the age of really 12 to 25 that deserves coverage, that is competing, that has had a brilliant year, that has got some great results. And, and by the way, I don't just mean first, second and third. We're not here just to cover the winners. We're here to cover everybody. Mm -hmm. um, somebody rang me two days ago and asked, could we cover her daughter? Um, I said, yeah. She said she hasn't come first in any event. I said, I didn't give a shit. <laughs> I said, has she got a good story? Does she want the coverage? Does she want to be online like this? And she said, yeah. I said, are you okay with it as her mother? She said, yeah. I said, let's do it. Yeah. You know, that's the that's why we're in a privileged position, Chrissy. Um we get to do stuff and meet amazing people all the time and help them tell their story. And if we can do this with a good heart all the time and do it in a really progressive way, and don't get me wrong when I say good heart, because people will come in and go, you're soft. <laughs> <laughs> I am relentless. Uh, I work seven days a week. I have a bracelet on me that says only the brave. Above that, I have a ring that says be fearless. And on my other hand, I have a ring that says never give up. <laughs> let's not get away from the fact I would happily work 17, 18, 20 hours a day for the next five years if we could create the change we needed to create you have to be relentless in this game and we are unwaveringly relentless mm -hmm. um, but we do it with a really positive perspective on what we're trying to do and we try to empower or inspire people as much as we can um, and if we can do that for the next generation if we can do that for female equestrians around the world and we can do that for the grasses community, that brings me back to that word, doesn't it? Legacy. That's yeah. a beautiful legacy to leave. You will have transformed uh, real transformational change across the equine industry on a global scale. Um, and that's a beautiful thing to be able to do. And if, yeah. you, if you potentially have the talent or the skills or the work ethic to do that, well, then why wouldn't you do it? You know I mean? Exactly, yeah. It could, go, it could go very wrong <laughs> but that's life isn't it <laughs> you know? also they say as well you win or you learn so there's no yeah. such thing as failing you learn from failures so 100% uh, I have my hair behind me winners never quit and quitters never win yeah you know difficult roads often lead to beautiful destinations 
the best view comes after the hardest climb. These things are all embedded. In, <laughs> they're yeah. all embedded. They're literally around me all the time. My <laughs> sister got me one at Christmas. You miss one hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Yeah, and we will take shots after shots um, because we have to be fearless there. I mean, mm -hmm. I think the thing as well, to... like you know, when you're saying about having a kind heart, I think that the thing is, like, you actually genuinely care about what you're doing. Like, it's not just yeah. a money grab. Like, obviously, businesses want to make money, but you you actually care about this and like getting people, you know, uh, hugely. Uh, least, like... Like, we get abused all the time. Like. <laughs> We talk about this, like when I say abuse, like people just making smart comments. I mean, I have family and friends that do the same thing. But do not take a real job for yourself. She realizes we have 120 writers across two different brands that, that, that stretch across 20 odd countries. <laughs> that has been read in the fifth plus of the countries in the world. And I want to get a real job for myself. <laughs> but what they're fundamentally saying is, would you not like to have an easier lifestyle? Would you not like to have more consistent money all the time? Um no i don't i would prefer um to try and fulfill my dreams and my ambitions mike is the same sarah campbell and sarah Elbert are the same our advisory group for equitas are an amazing group and the management team for the grasses gazette are, are brilliant people um yeah. we're surrounded by good people and over the coming months we'll be adding more and more to both teams um hungry people people who are positive influences people who want to create that change as well um and that's what we got to do but look you can you you sort of have to make decisions and somebody said it to me last week you like to have a lot of the information before you make a decision and i said i do but i said once i make a decision i mean normally very definitive so a big question we'll have coming up across the next 12 months odd is do we take investment or not yeah no you know from a standard um, model we should be taking investment soon we have 30,000 subscribers after nine months we're the fastest growing equine media brand in Ireland the UK online equine media brand the numbers are the numbers are the numbers they're good but yeah. the minute we would do something like that and I've spoken to investors they w wouldn't want me running Equitas they wouldn't want me setting up the grasses because uh, or sorry they wouldn't want me setting up the next generation um, and that's a problem because I, I believe in my heart and soul and I know Mike believes the same um, that to create the change we really want to create these three verticals need to be working in tandem and in parallel with one another mm -hmm. um, and to do that it means yeah you will lose money short term and life will be a lot harder for a while um, but I mean that's okay you know it's not if if change if change in the world is so easy everybody would have done it and we live in a perfect society yeah that's the reality um it's really really hard nine out of ten startups fail for a reason um that's just fact that's not fiction nine out of ten fail uh, yeah. what we do is really hard. i mean if you go online right now and i'll ask your audience to do this um and go look up the number one job in the world for a psychopath it is a ceo <laughs> And this is fact. Go look it up. Oh, no, I believe it. Yeah, I have checked it because you need to be bipolar at times. Uh, you need to be, maybe bipolar is a bad explanation. You need to be so up and down nonstop. Yeah. Um, you will, in one moment, have the best news uh, that you get. We just brought 30,000 subscribers. Woohoo! Yes, let's go celebrate. No, you're after losing all your money in your bank account. Ah, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not again. <laughs> And that's the way it is. You're literally constantly up and down. So I learned that at the start of my journey. And my as my missus says, you're just meh all the time. Yeah. Uh, I don't go too high up. I don't go too low down. Um, I'm happy when ha good things happen. And I'm never too sad when bad things happen. Because yeah. our job is to stay disciplined and to stay focused. And when other people are falling down around us, our job is to lift them back up. When other people are struggling, our job is to be strong. That's your job as a leader. And is it easy? No, it's not at all the time. But, you know, we have to be unwavering in our belief and our support of people if we want to build these movements that we want to build around the world. Um, and like Steve Jobs said, you know, the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world, hence the CEO and the psychopath reference. Um, the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Um, we have to have that that belief when everybody else is telling you it's not possible. Um, 
I mean, that's the thing as well you know like people who know you're saying like you're not know you but you know people who have done the or do the nine to five and the easy job like they'll always tell you they'll always have opinions but they always say it's a, don't take opinions from people you wouldn't switch places with yeah <laughs> <laughs> i really like that one yeah 100 yeah, it's the man in the arena quad isn't it you know the, the guy who's covered in blood sweat and tears um it's exactly what you just said. Why yeah. would you take advice from somebody who's never walked the road that you're on? You yeah. know, and I like the, the, the you know, that old poem, Two Roads Diverge and I took the one, let's travel by, and that has made all the difference. Fundamentally, I will always take the more road, let's travel by. Um, because what we've done so far, we didn't do it the way most people would do it. Mm. And we didn't do it the way more, nearly anybody would do it. But that's to our, our favour. That's to yeah. our benefit. Um, because we've done it in a different way. That's why we have the community we have. That's why we have the partners we have, the co-founders, the, the writer groups, the management team, the advisory groups. Um, they, It's really nice to have people believe in you. Yeah. Um, believe in your vision. But it's even nicer to be able to return that uh, respect by actually delivering. Mm. And us to be able to deliver what we did with Equitas, 42 countries in four days. I was to be able to break 30,000 subscribers and people thought as a grassroots brand would not work. And then at the start it was, well, you, it won't work if you've just women writing for it. Why won't it? Most of the grassroots community are female. You're just trying to be sexist. <laughs> well, you know, this thing is, you can't have too many women writing because you can't give them too many voices or the men will get uncomfortable. Yeah, but that's... <laughs> That very much to me sounds like a man problem. Yeah. Not a woman problem and not a grassroots problem. It's a you problem. And it's a manifestation of whatever you've gone through in life that has brought you to who you are, where you are right now and where your headspace is at to make a comment like that. But my job isn't to judge you either because who am I? I'm not God. I'm not here to judge anybody. <laughs> I'm here to understand people. I am here to try and lead and inspire people. I am here to try and solve problems that people and, you know, with equity as women have been dealing with for generations, yeah. literally hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, and now we're in a good position, Chrissy. We're in a position where we have influence. About two weeks ago, something big happened. Um, and we got sent a message. Um... And the message was from Jessica Von Brito Wernell. I gotta get the sorry if I'm pronouncing this wrong. I'm okay. same time. But what she's talking about is she came back early from maternity leave. Uh, her pregnancy to she deployed with the FEI, and uh, that her during her period of maternity, fifty percent of her ranking points would remain. So the problem here is that she's after coming back early from maternity. Yeah. And she wants to go back out riding again. And she wants to go back out competing. Um, and it's now they're trying to say it is not that she can't compete and she can't do anything. And that if she wants to come back and compete now, she has to vote null and void all of her competition points so far, which is just a disgrace. Yeah. Um, but fundamentally, it, the rule in nowhere does it say that an athlete, and this is her words, must take six months of a break. So one of the other things I'm going to do when I leave this call is I'm going to contact them, Jessica because the Equitas should be supporting her. This is a disgraceful mm -hmm. decision. How dare you judge women differently? How dare you say that it's not a woman's body and it's not their choice? If Jessica is in a position now to come back early from maternity leave and her body and her mind are in that position to do that, there is no way should you be taking any ranking points off her because she's coming back early. Why should, why should you be doing something negative to her for her doing something positive for women yeah there is no logic to this so um, this went down into the group last night and i can see people like freda connamara or heather lemon and she's a really disappointed to see women being treated like this in this day and age heart is broken for you and hopefully the fei fei cops on and allows mothers their right to choose when they're ready to return to, to the sport yeah and i'm going there's 429 comments on that post uh, as of when we're talking about it that is disgraceful but Equitas has to support that Equitas has to be the voice for Jessica it has to be the voice for women across the world um, and you better believe that there's men involved in making that decision and I say that as a guy 
why because they don't understand and they're not trying to understand oh um, i don't doubt that for a minute that it's men making that decision and that wrecks my head because i'm gone that's why i when i said earlier about being a real model look chrissy i'm gonna make lots of mistakes and mm. um, i'm okay with that we look like you so eloquently put it earlier you want you you win or you learn yeah um, and you go yeah um when you see stuff like that happen and you see all the messages gone into the group last night, uh, you find out very, very quickly where the issues are, where the problems are, um, and why we need to be the voice that we are. That's yeah. it, you know? So yeah. we will see how that plays out. I need to get on to Jessica after this call or after this podcast um, and see if we can help her or support her in any way. But that's our job isn't it that's our mm. it's our responsibility to be there for women like that um and that's an amazing position to be in as a guy to learn from women across the world like this um and to be able to offer support in whatever way we can so look if we can do this with the grassroots we can do it with women like jessica and women across the world in the equine industry and we can do it for the next generation we would have done a lot yeah no absolutely what's actually something that surprised you about starting all of these things like so i'd say like i know you're in marketing so you're kind of used to promoting stuff but maybe it's like horses or horse people or anything um, like that like because you know i have to say equestrians are a specific breed so i don't know if any of them surprised there you. there is a, a fair few things to be honest yeah. the lack of understanding of technology in the equine industry or the benefits of it um yeah that's not the adoption of technology once they do understand it mm -hmm. um the <clears throat> the like a lot of the equine community seems to know each other and then there's and the other side they don't like yeah. it's very fragmented or something um like a lot of the writers you know like just say take the grasses because there'll be 85 of them mm -hmm. um, they didn't have a clue who each other were yeah now, if you're in GAA circles for the best part in across Ireland, you'll know people in other GAA circles. If you're playing rugby, you'll know people in other rugby circles. In the startup mm -hmm. scene, if we're looking from a business perspective, the minute there was a new good startup in Roscommon or Wexford or Waterford or Cork or wherever, we were always told about it straight away. Did you hear about Chrissy Hawkins? Did you hear about Strong in the Saddle? She, did, did you see that yet? No, I didn't know. Who's Chrissy? All right, here, check a profile. Do this. Mm -hmm. the, the community didn't seem to be that well connected. Um, you have of course people in dressage will know dressage or people yeah. in eventing will know eventing um, that really surprised me a lot um, and I suppose the big thing that that above all else is I don't know how to phrase it the, the lack of I want to say confidence like to watch the growth of our writers across both brands for Equitas across the last two or three months for the Grasses Gazette for nine or ten months and to watch where they are now versus where they were at the start um, is an amazing thing to see. Mm. Really, really is. To see their growth, their progression. And all they really needed that I can see was somebody just believing in them. Yeah. And fundamentally, we bought no. I mean, I know you're interested in psychology somewhat. Um, and you have to be as a coach or a trainer, yeah. but um, all a person really needs is to believe in themselves. Yeah, that's it. You know, it. That's not easy, by the way. When I say that, mm -hmm. hey, just believe in yourself. Okay, I'm gonna go take on the world. <laughs> <laughs> not that simple, I, admittedly. 100%, I agree. Um, but uh, confidence, I think. Um, and then the last thing I would say, allowing into the disconnection in the community uh, to technology and the confidence um, would probably be an understanding of where money can be made in the industry. Mm. You hear people talking about, you know, this vertical or this vertical or it's harder to make money here, or it's harder to make money here, or you won't make profit in that section of the industry if you go in there and I'm gone. Yeah, what about all these other sections you're not thinking about? What about media? What about marketing? What about content creation? What about media creators? What about, you know, there's, like, the equine industry is worth 278 billion a year. Yeah. That, and by the way, that was in 2021. I think it's gone up to, like, 320 now. And I'm going, that is a huge car to money. You know, um, there is a lot of money floating around this industry. Um, and I think there is going to be a seismic shift in how people will start making money across the industry in the next five or 10 years. Uh, I think you've had a lot of traditional foundations of how people make money. 
Um, but I think if you connect these three or four things, like I've said, people having more confidence, people understand technology, and then secondly, using it, people tapping into the community and people understanding where they can make money and you connect these things together. And what you'll most likely have is a lot of new innovations coming into the industry over the next five and 10 years and a lot of new opportunities for people to be able to go and create a self-sufficient career um, to create their own job, their own brands, similar to what you're doing, Chrissy. Yeah. Um, and to be able to do that on a national or an international scale. Yeah, no, I think you're right when it comes to technology. It is very, like, can be very far behind and stuff like that, you know, in some situations. Like, even, even silly things like having a social media presence for a yard or, like, a place that runs events. Like, they're still posting on Facebook and, you know, no one's on Facebook anymore. <laughs> Literally. Except your granny, maybe. Yeah, I don't like TikTok. Yeah, we'll, we'll like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I hate really when sorry. someone does that. Oh, I don't like TikTok. Oh, I don't get TikTok here. We're like, well... You didn't get, get Instagram like... at the start either, or Facebook. It's no different. It's for uh, young people. Facebook was set up for college students. What are you talking about? You yeah. know, you vine before you had TikTok. You know, let's not go back to b-boy. You know, it's always the younger generation. It's the push-pull mechanism. You know, they, they pull down the older and you push up the younger to get to the middle section here. That's what Facebook done so elegantly, you know. Um... And like you said, nobody's, you know, Facebook's numbers are dropping and dropping. Mark Zuckerberg lost 70 billion last year, you know, in his net worth. Um, not good. So, you know, you want to go embrace Instagram, do more on YouTube, uh, align to TikTok and just go be yourself. But yeah, I think those are the three or four things, Chrissy. The detect, the, the understanding it, the adoption of it, the community side and what seems to be or seemed to be a disconnect. Um, the confidence probably being the biggest of all of them uh, and then people's ability to make money or their lack of understanding of where money could be made um, because I think there is lots of opportunities in the equine industry um, we're very excited to be in here doing what we're doing you know yeah so when are you starting horse riding lessons <laughs> never <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> never never um, this was actually brought up to me, no joking, on a call. Uh, I must be going back four months ago. Um, what I need to do, and I'll give you two answers for one question. I need to, over the coming months, because obviously uh, this announcement was made, so this is coming out in a couple of weeks. So mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, an announcement was made um, that Mike, my partner in crime, my, uh, the best business partner I've ever had, is stepping down from the Grasses Gazette. Um, yeah, that has been tough. Uh, I can't say it hasn't been. It's still quite raw right now, so don't want you to cry. No, I'm <laughs> I, I, I can't say I didn't cry. Um, <laughs> and as you can hear, I can talk. I'm not shy. Yeah. Um, when we announced it to the Grassroots Gazette team, the management team, uh, I couldn't talk. Mm. I've been deadly honest, Kitty. Or, sorry, Chrissy, I could not talk. Um, Kitty had to save the day. That's why she popped into my head there. And the management team called with some humour. But even we were announcing it, I think at quarter past seven to the management team. And we done that deliberately because we had a live stream at eight and we didn't want this to go on for two hours. Um, so I think seven, no, it was seven o'clock, sorry. Um, so we announced it to them, but from, I'd say quarter past six. And I don't get emotional. I really don't. Um, I, I have emotional intelligence. I have no problem being vulnerable. Um I'm in touch with my inner self and my feelings, you know. I, I'm not afraid to cry. Um, but I just could not control myself. Mm. From about quarter past six, twenty past six, I was just thinking of the journey me and Mike had been on. And I just, I want to say I couldn't breathe. You know, when you have so much energy and so much emotion running through your body, and I just couldn't. And so we went down to the call. Um, Mike brought the news to the management team. And then it was, you know, his partner should have been talking next. <laughs> hey, I'm saying. <laughs> um, I couldn't. I just, the lads, I can't. Yeah. And I was just crying, just tears streaming down my face. I just said, I can't. Um, and Brendan Murphy and Nicola Donovan and Gary Monaghan, Kitty Weldon came in and they said their piece to Mike. And then at the end of it, by then, I felt I could read a bit better. And I just said, thank you and said my piece. Um, but... Look, my point being that 
the mic has stepped down. I will be taking over the grassroots because that knows the CEO. I will also be the CEO of Equitas. Um, it will be fun. <laughs> <laughs> it will be a ridiculous uh, challenge. Um, but it's one we're able for. I, I'm in a good place. Um, we have the experience now. And mm. the point I was going to make and answering your question specifically was what I need to be conscious of probably Chrissy as opposed to me needing to go riding horses and adding another thing to my ball <laughs> um, is I need to be conscious that as the CEO of the Grasses Gazette and as the CEO of Equitas, Equitas is a bit easier because all of the women involved in that are horsey women. Mm. They're all bad equestrians. Um, I don't, I've never owned the horse. I've never ridden a horse. My background is in marketing and media. Why me and Mike were such a dynamic duo because we, because Mike owns a shit ton of land. Yeah. Uh, he owns a lot of horses. His mum owns a horse. His dad owns a horse. His sisters own horses. You go into Mike's sitting room, and there's literally like inside. You go into Mike's back door, inside in the little uh, pantry area. There's literally horsey wallpaper. There's horses. <laughs> you know that, yeah. that Mike's house, like. Uh, um, but what I need to be conscious of is I need to put the people around me who who understand and who were born and bred into this industry. Um, why I want them to go back a step, uh, learn how to ride horses is I will I want for a couple of years anyway. Boy, yeah, no time. Yeah, that's, that's the first thing. <laughs> uh, the second part is a guy told me on a call about four months ago, and I was touching on this at the start, and he said, "Shane, I would never ride a horse if I was you." And I said, "Why do you think that, no, John?" And he said, "Because when you go into a room, what you have is a unique and a fresh perspective." Yeah. He said, "You haven't been corrupted. You haven't been pulled in any different direction." You don't know any better than business, marketing, and media. Mm -hmm. And he said, I would keep it that way for as long as humanly possible. Because he said, that's what's unique about you, is that you're coming in with an, a totally objective opinion. Yeah. Because you weren't born and bred into it. And when people, so many told me that you couldn't do a women's media brand as a guy or be involved in it, that different perspective, that objective thinking is what went, you're all absolutely fucking wrong here. Are you mental? Of course I can. Of course we can. Yeah. We, can do, we could do grasses because then why can't we do this? Well, That's true. Of course we can. And the ability in that fresh perspective or that objective thinking is what, what put us in a position to do the stuff. So, no, to answer your question very, very specifically, I will not be getting on a horse. Can we, get, uh, can we get you a little pet miniature pony? And then you'll be like, no, he's an honorary like one of those teddies. Yeah, I have to be get a teddy pony. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can call him, you can like, he can be like the little grassroots mascot. <laughs> I quite like, I like this one. Like, yeah. this, like, I like this, yeah, you can see Or even when you know the little, the little mini ponies, the really small ones <laughs> that are literally just pets, no one can ride them, you could be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be more applicable though, Chris. That'd yeah. be more, just so I have to go through the minding of a horse. Yeah, uh, and you can I, do I, all I the yeah. That's something I, I wouldn't mind doing, because then that's the discipline and the mind frame and the dedication and the sacrifice that the grassroots community or equestrian women or the next generation make. That's okay. Having to actually learn how to ride a horse <laughs> to get my ride or fitness good with someone like you. Like, no, 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 no. Oh, it's not that like you can have the little, then you're technically equestrian, you have a horse. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm if happy. You've shined out of a stable, I think you count. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that. that yeah. That's okay. I have done that. Um, but no, I, I am Paul. the authentic experience. Focused. Yeah, no, I'm polarized focused on, uh, on building the media brand we need to build for each one of those verticals uh, it's what people want and deserve i mean you know i pitched this idea originally around the next generation i'm a, a hound for ideas um, <laughs> i'm getting better at trying not to do them all at the same time um but i pitched that idea to mike uh four months ago i'd say I'd say a month after we launched Equitas, Mike would say, not another idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Mike, Mike, it's not until next year. It's not until next year. <laughs> and he's like, right, I'll listen to you. So I was like, right, give me 10 minutes. <laughs> say, say Mike would see your number come up and go, oh, what's he come up with now? Yes. Yeah, I'm genuinely. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I don't disagree. Um, but we are polarized focused. So, you know, we're better at it. Well, I'm better at it though. Uh, Mike has always been good at it. I'd never take that away from him. Um, and Sarah Campbell and Sarah Ellibert are, are ridiculously good at polarizing focus. They are so organized. Um, and they have to be, you know, they're, they're young mothers. Um, that, that discipline they have is, an, I would admire hugely. Um, but 
I came up with that four months ago. Um, love the concept. Said it to Mike when he would listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I mean, we knew we could see it. I mean, Mike has done interviews. I mean, he's TikTok famous. Um, it was put in the group. You were in the groups. <laughs> it was put in the group yesterday. How are we going to replace somebody who's 25 that looks like they're 14? Um, <laughs> on the first comments in yesterday. Um, but in the last... I'm older though now. I'm, I'm old on TikTok. He, oh, well, yeah. he might pass for 25. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, yeah, see, that's, that's what you've the advantage, Chrissy. I yeah. look old. You know, I had a receding hairline at 18. I have the same receding hairline, only worse now at 33. And I have grey hairs. Uh, <laughs> I have grey hairs. I just dyed in blonde. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get to a barber <laughs> quickly. <laughs> um, but in the last 10 days alone, we've had, I would speculate, 15, minimum 15, probably closer to 20, mums or dads messaging and ask can their daughter or son get coverage in the Grasslands Gazette? Mm. And that is something that's never been done before in this country. Yeah. Ever. Where you have mothers and fathers going, actually, my, my son and daughter here, um, even if they don't win in the RDS or they don't win in Mill Street at, at a whatever level, um, the Grasslands Gazette will give them coverage and give them experience and give them exposure. It will open up opportunities for them to potentially get sponsors and it will help them tell their story. It will get them practice being on a media or being interviewed by somebody or being on video, etc. Um, so one of my strengths always has been and always will be, Chrissy, patterns. Mm -hmm. Spotting patterns of behavior and being able to go, well, what's the evolution of TikTok? Yeah. You know, what's the evolution of Facebook or Instagram? Um, why are instagram stories 15 seconds long what does that mean for people's attention span why when you got your instagram account is reels the top thing that they want you to promote you know you go and you press plus at the top of your instagram to add something it's called real post story story highlight and live stream so they want you to push reels first mm -hmm. or second and story start you know who like literally last night i sent the land to the management group team um and somebody um sent on um I oh, sorry I sent something into the management group and I was after getting offered a subscription on Instagram. <laughs> so I could subscribe to somebody's account. Like I could subscribe to your account. Yeah. Um and it's four ninety nine a month for J tournaments. Um and I get a subscriber badge, exclusive content and a subscriber group chat. Ooh. So these things are all coming and evolving. So my my automatic thing there is, you know, I saw that last night, and this is the way my mind works. So this was at what time? Uh, yesterday evening, 16 or 18.50. So I literally sent this into our management group at the Grasses Gazette, and I said, being offered subscriptions for Instagram accounts, didn't really think it would come this soon, thought it would be 12 months more. Very interesting opportunities for us here, potentially, uh, with the audience we have and with the age of our profile. I mean, 80% of our readers are between the age of 18 and 45. Mm where we have that young audience. So the first thing that comes into my head when I look at, uh, as an example, um, the next generation, let's say, I'm going, well, why wouldn't we get a coach like you or three or four coaches like you? So just say a fitness coach, uh, an eventing coach, a dressage coach, and uh, a confidence coach at the other side. And why wouldn't we put the four of them on one central account where they put out this content and young people, as an example, from 18 to 25 can subscribe at five euro a month to get access to that content. Yeah. And if there's four people involved, well, everybody gets a euro per subscription per month. So meaning the grasses, because that would get one euro, Tracy would get another, and the other three people would get one euro out of every person's subscription. Now, 10,000 people sign up, um, and they're all paying their five euro ago well that's fifty thousand. well chrissy's after making 10 grand off that account that month yeah and chrissy's going that's good addition you better make me one of those four people <laughs> yeah i'm sitting there going yeah yeah so, so how do i sign up to this <laughs> where do these 10, 10 people come you from see how my, that's how my mind works mm. i look at the subscription and the thing that sarah ellibert said i sent down something a few weeks ago and she just said um we need to understand about paying attention don't we and i said yeah when when you're in this and you're in this lifestyle, it has to be all consuming. So there, there's a famous, um, uh, what would you call them now? Uh, I'm not thinking of the word. There's a famous startup hub in California and it's called Y Combinator. Um, 
and it is the best play well what what they would rank in a global scale it's an accelerator program so it's where startups go in with a little idea they help you formulate the idea do research whatever and try and find your market penetration the guy who runs that is one of the smartest startup guys in the world ever his name is paul graham and paul graham is a famous saying that you will never solve truly solve a world problem unless you're thinking about it in the shower you think about it in the shower yeah <laughs> in other words, that it's consuming you, mm-hmm. that it's all. So the minute I see that last night, I can look at that subscription thing and I can go, oh, cool, Instagram are doing subscriptions. Mm-hmm. Or I can look at it and go, oh, here's the model I would use to build this. Here's what yeah. I was thinking for this. Here's how. Well, so we have the next generation. Okay, what do they need? They need to be instilled some of the stuff we're talking about on this podcast and they need confidence. They need access to A, B, and C. Okay. Well, who do I know that's in that? Okay, Chrissy can do the writer confidence or the writer, the coaching side over here, the fitness mm-hmm. coaching. I can get Rachel for arguments like she's an advertiser in the Rasses Gazette to do the, the writer confidence side, meaning confidence building mentality. Okay, who do I know? Sarah Elbert can do uh, her eventing coaching and for arguments like Emma McCauley can do the other coaching over here. All mm-hmm. right, would those four people sign up to be, to be a mentor or to put out this type of content? Oh yeah, I would think so okay what's the business model right well let's make it fair like we keep talking about so there's five involved four coaches in the grasses gazette all right we'll split it 2020 2020 there are 20 there's five twenties obviously and you come in and you go okay now our goal is to get the ten thousand subscribers for that account um they're all gonna pay five euro a month like i said that's 50 grand coming in from that subscription on a monthly basis and the four coaches are making 10 grand a month and so it's grasses gazette everybody wins yeah and that's the way you know when your mind is in it and when it's a lifestyle and when it's all consuming that's the way your mind will think it won't yeah. just look at that and go oh cool subscriptions it will do a whole lot more well, that's it yeah like you know it is you've left like as i said all consuming like you've literally gone from this is how we can make it a thing yeah and that's as easy as it is somebody asked me last week because we were having that discussion on taking investment and they, um what were they talking about again though they were asking me, told me I needed to take investment or we needed to take investment because I was pitching him an idea that a guy came up with. Well, he said something on a call and he said his biggest frustration in the equine industry, and he's a coach, uh, Bill McGuire is his name. He was on a live stream with us. Um, and he said his biggest frustration in the equine industry was that young people weren't patient enough. They want instant results, instant, instant, oh, instant. Oh, God. All reality TVs. Yeah, but Bill said that on a live stream. He was on with me and Mike when he was down in Mill Street. So I sat down and I wrote, um, Bill doesn't get young people. Bill doesn't understand social media. Um, and I wasn't belittling Bill. He's an amazing guy and a fantastic coach. And what I meant by he doesn't get young people is he doesn't get how young people digest stuff um, and how it impacts them. Mm-hmm. How do young people digest stuff? Through social media and through media. Media, meaning what older people who are reading and watching media are telling them and talking around them and what they hear. And fundamentally, where they learn the most, let's be clear, is through social media. Mm-hmm. What they're scrolling, what they're seeing, etc. Well, we control both. We have a huge influence when I'm saying we control. We control the grasses gazette. We control equitas. We control media bands, co- brands, mm-hmm. covering both. So um, I rang Bill two weeks ago. And said, Bill, listen, about your comment on our call, I think we solved this. Um, and I give, give him a pitch and pitch the idea of what I thought we should do and the same to my mate that called over last week when he was saying we should take investment and I said no I don't think so and I said here's why and I told him just what I'm telling you right now I told him my explanation to how we would solve the problem Bill had addressed and then he said how much money do you need to do that and I said nothing and he said explain and I said well can I find five coaches um, that want to support young people to have more patience that really want their profile built up on a national and an international level um, that we can put a narrative in a media brand around them, give them a shit ton of coverage. Um, and can we, as a byproduct of that, find just a 20 young people from the ages of, obviously with parental approval, but between the ages of 12 and 20 who want to be turned into little media celebrities. Yeah. Because they're being patient. And I was like, yeah, I could do all that tomorrow. Like within reason, I could yeah. go up, put up a poll and I could go, <clears throat> we're looking for five coaches, here's what we want, anybody interested? I would, by the time that poll goes, you would have five coaches nominated, whether they're the right ones or wrong ones, no, Chrissy, you get my point. Yeah. 
because of the position of influence we are in, you have the ability to do all these things. Um, and that's the beautiful place. That's why I keep saying with great power comes great responsibility. We have a huge amount of power because of the size of the audience you have, but you have a responsibility to do the right thing with that power. Um, mm -hmm. And that will always be the challenge we have, not to be <laughs> taken in a different direction or have our vision skewed, you know. You have to be as honest and sincere as you can be and try and do the right thing all the time. Yeah, no, that's a... Like you do get that from you and you're talking like you do try to do everything, you know, for everyone. You know what I mean? It's, um, yeah. Um, I think that is pretty much everything I have to ask you. However, I have one and this is going to, this is, you're going to have the hardest one on this because you have had about 10 different quotes on this already. But what is the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um... I have loads. You can pick two. No, no, I have loads of them. Uh, one is my, I would just say, be fearless in the pursuit of excellence. Yeah. Um, unwaveringly be fearless in the pursuit of excellence. Um, you know, I'll go back to that quote from Coach Carter, uh, and I know it's from somebody else before that, but our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we have power beyond all measure. Um, it is not our darkness, you know. <laughs> go on, I won't put <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> it's like, it likes poetry, I actually do. Um, but that would be the first one, and I think that's the biggest thing. That's what I have to remind myself every day. That's why the bracelet, literally, my bracelet says only the brave, and my ring says be fearless. That we yeah. have to be fearless. It's a scary place to be the CEO of a women's media brand when you don't have a huge background in the equine industry. But mm -hmm. I'm not afraid to be the CEO. Um, I'm not afraid for what it means or what it stands for. Um, I'm afraid that I let people down. That yeah. I want to do what I know I should and can do. Um, that would be the first one. And then the second one would be from my favourite quote of all time, that will we'll be getting tattooed on my body as soon as possible. <laughs> um, the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Yeah. Um, like that has to be... You see, I don't... <clears throat> you get advice all the time. Um... And I don't necessarily, the, the advice I look for, like, so as an example, I'll give you one more. I was watching um, the All, in, All or Nothing on Prime recently, and I'm always late with these things. So I was watching the Arsenal one that got released, even though I'm a Man United fan for my sins. Um, <laughs> Good luck. I know. <laughs> <laughs> But, well, I can't say much. I'm a Liverpool fan, no. so nothing great recently. <laughs> yeah, at this moment in time, listen, the last five years, you can say lot. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> but I was it's been wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike Lartetta was on it. He's the Arsenal manager. I know and, who he is. I love him. Yeah, he's an amazing guy. I know, I just like his face. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like his hair. I don't know how he keeps <laughs> back with order, to be honest. Um, but he was on it and he talked about something and I have people telling me all the time that you shouldn't be so open with people and you shouldn't be like, I give ideas. I tell people what we're doing. I set down mm -hmm. big goals and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. And sometimes you get flack for that and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you look like you, you know, you can see the future and other times you look like you're a fool. Uh, <laughs> but in his document, in that whatever episode, in his episode five or six or four or five, uh, he talks about making a conscious decision to be open with people. And that's the advice I would give. Now, I took that advice. He didn't give it to me. I was watching the series. Yes. He said, you have to make a conscious decision to be more open with people. And he said, you need to understand that by putting yourself in that vulnerable a position, you will inspire so many more people. You will touch so many more hearts, but you will get hurt a whole lot more. Yeah. And that's hard, but that's needed. If you want to, to really lead movements and lead people, you have to be willing to be that vulnerable. You have to be willing to take the pain that comes with it. Um, that's just part and parcel of it. So, you know, you, once you understand that, I think that's it. I don't, you know, I've got advice from people all the time on different things, but there's only certain things that have really stood out to me. Um, I think we're great, you know, I, you heard me saying it to yeah. uh, Be fearless in the pursuit of excellence. Be the best you can be, you know, and be fearless. Try things, test things. Don't be afraid when anybody thinks or says because they're not in your journey. That has to be the first one. Um, for me, uh, it's literally written right here, right beside me. Um, all of us here to the crazy ones, the Steve Jobs quote. Um, so the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. 
And yeah. I believe that. Go with it if you believe in your heart and soul. Um, and you're willing to sacrifice everything and dedicate your life to this. Well, and and create that lifestyle. Like I said, I'm talking to you right now, Chrissy. Uh, my missus is in Alicante with her yeah. man. I'm sitting here on Friday talking to you. I'm not in Alicante. Could I be? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Do I want to be? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Am I? No. I, I should be doing what I need to do because we have stuff to do. Uh, and then the last thing, like Mike, Michael Arteta said, um, if you if you want to be that person, and you have to be strong enough to take it, like, let's yeah. be clear. that's what he was fundamentally saying. I will be vulnerable. I will be open. I will be hurt a whole lot more, but I believe that I'm strong enough to take it. And I believe that what I will lose is worth sacrificing for what I will gain. And that's what I talked about. And I'm, yeah, literally, that was three weeks ago. And I had to chat with Mike the next day. I literally told him. And I said, that's the way I will always be moving forward. I will get hurt a whole lot more. I will be in a lot more vulner vulnerable and fragile positions. But I believe in my heart and soul that I'm strong enough to take what comes my way. And that the upside from this will be far more powerful than the downside. So yeah. that's it. Yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. Um, so... Right. First off, thank you for joining me today. And uh, second thing being is, where can everyone find you, Shane? Or where can you find the grassroots set and everything? Uh, it has, it has, it has, it has, has, everything. Uh, you'll find me online at, at Shane Max Social. Uh, I'm the same on Twitter. I'm the same on Instagram. I am the same on TikTok, I think. Um, I spend most of my time on our brand accounts. That stuff. So please excuse the state of my social media. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, the Grassroots Gazette, go to the Grassroots Gazette.ie. Equitas website is launching, like I said, around the second week of October um, over on Ghost. So if you go to the Grassroots Gazette.ie, you can click Discover Equitas and you'll find out all about Equitas. If you want to find Equitas online uh, on, on Instagram, TikTok or Facebook, it's at Equitas Era. Uh, E-Q-U-I-T-A-S-E-I-R-E and the Grassroots Gazette is at the Grassroots Gazette everywhere yeah YouTube Facebook Instagram everywhere yeah. thank you for having me on it's been an absolute pleasure getting to chat with you Chrissy uh, I hope this is what you wanted and your yeah. audience enjoy it um, really really absolute pleasure being on with you thoroughly enjoyed this no it's been absolutely amazing to have you on um, especially it does it encompasses the whole why not thing you know you're going for it you're you know, people are asking you questions all the time and you're going for it still. Um, For everyone else who's looking for me as well, if you don't follow me, I, I'm on Instagram and TikTok at Chrissy H Fitness or for my horse side of things, because I feel like more horse people will listen to this. Um, For all my rider fitness, you will find me on Instagram at strong in the saddle underscore and TikTok with just strong in the saddle because someone got that damn strong in the saddle on Instagram before me. <laughs> 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 but I got TikTok friends. I love it. <laughs> but yeah, um, as I said, great to have you on, and thank you for everything today. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. Best of luck in the future, and may you keep continuing on with your wonderful success. Keep it going. <laughs> thank you. I really do appreciate everybody who listens to this podcast. So if you please could help me with the algorithm and leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And even, you know, if you want to reach out and suggest topics for me, I'd be delighted to hear from you. Drop me a DM on Instagram or TikTok. And thanks again for listening.